Hello everyone. Welcome to this video on process capability and process performance concepts. Today we will see what is process capability and performance and their respective indices. So what is process capability? It refers to inherent variability of a product characteristic. It compares the output of a process in statistical control to the specification limits. There are three basic process capability indices, CP, CPK, and CPM, and all these are dimensionless numbers. There are two basic assumptions underlying capability indices. First is sample size should be large enough, around 50 independent data points. And secondly, population is normally distributed. Now let's understand the indices a little more. CP index. It is the ratio of the difference between the upper and lower specification limits to the natural process variation. Symbolically, it is USL minus LSL divided by 6 sigma. It is interesting to know here that CP actually is the ratio of voice of the customer to the voice of the process, that is tolerance to natural process variation. CP value of greater than or equal to 1 indicate a technically capable process and a CP value of 2 indicate a Six Sigma performance. So we can conclude that higher CP values indicate a more capable process. It is important to note here that CP index does not address the centering of a process relative to the specification limits. Next is the CPK index, which addresses the centering of a process. So that solves our problem. It is measured as the minimum of upper and lower process capability. Upper process capability index is USL minus X bar divided by 3 sigma, and lower process capability index is X bar minus LSL divided by 3 sigma, where X bar is the process average Sigma is the process standard deviation and 3 sigma is half of the process capability. In order to compute a CPK value, at least one of the specification limits must be stated. Smaller CPK means more defects. CPK values of 1.33 or 1.67 are commonly set as goals. An interesting point here is we can easily convert CPK to a sigma level. The formula is sigma level is equal to 3 times CPK. Some very small yet very important points to remember here are CP is always greater than CPK. CPK can only have positive values. CPK can at most be equal to CP. A CPK of zero means that actual process average matches or falls outside one of the specification limits. If CPK for a process is very low, how do we improve it? That's one of the questions which most of the process improvement consultants always talk about. There could be three such scenarios where we can actually see the play of CP, CPK, and how to improve a lower CPK. Here is a summary table for the same. Case 1 is histogram not centered but can physically fit between the specification limits. This means that CP is good but CP is bad. Hence, we should try to center the process. Case 2. Try to visualize what we are talking about these three cases. Case 2 is histogram centered but extends beyond specs. The histogram is centered but it extends beyond the specification limit. Which means that CP and CPK both are bad and yet similar. So. In this case, we need to reduce the variation. And finally, let's visualize case 3, where the histogram 
is not centered and cannot physically fit between the specs. Where CP and CPK both are bad and they are not similar this time. So we should aim at centering the process and also reduce the variation. The third process capability index is the CPM, also known as the Taguchi Capability Index or commonly called as Process Capability Index of the Mean. It accounts for the location of the process average relative to a target value. It assumes a normally distributed process output and uses the sample standard deviation calculation for sigma. CPM index is a function of the specification limit, mean of the process, and a provided target, which is T as in Tango. Here is the formula for the CPM index. If process average and target value are equal, then in the formula CPM becomes equal to CP. And when process average drifts from the target value, then CPM becomes less compared to CP. Now let's understand process performance. What is process performance? It measures the outcome of a process characteristic. Doesn't matter if the process is in statistical control or not. One has to be very cautious in using this concept because there might be a component of special cause variation here. Like process capability, process performance also has three types, three basic types of performance indices, PP, PPK, and PPM. And again, all these three are dimensionless numbers. These indices are often based on smaller sample size. If you remember, when we talked about process capability, it was bigger or large enough sample sizes. Let's look at the process performance indices now. PP is the ratio of the difference between USL and LSL to natural process variation. That is USL minus LSL divided by 6 S. S as in standard deviation. PPK is the minimum of PPKU and PPKL. Formulas are similar to CPK with the only change in standard deviation changing from a sigma to s, as in Sierra. And from our previous videos, I am sure you still remember what is sigma and what is the lowercase s, right? Well, PPK, as you have rightly guessed by now, determines the proximity of the process average to the nearest specification limit. At least one specification limit must be stated to be able to compute this value. It is also known as the potential process capability and is extensively used in the validation stage of a new product launch. PPM is the third process performance index and we will not talk much about it because it is analogous or it is functionally similar to CPM. With this, we come to close this discussion on process capability and process performance today. I hope that the concepts were of interest to you. We have more videos related to capability and performance in the times to come. Till then, thank you so much for your time today and do get in touch with me if you have any queries or suggestions. Please subscribe to the channel to stay updated on the latest videos. Cheers and bye bye.